Hello again. So this is a micro lecture on graphing distance for free fall. So really looking at the relationship between distance and time for something that's in free fall. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow up questions on Google Forms. So previously, we introduced this equation of d equals v naught t plus one half a t squared, where our beginning velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared uh, gave us how far something went if it was accelerating. Then later on we added in the idea that you can replace A with G for something that's accelerating due to gravity, so something that's falling. Well, I want to add another term in here, which is the D-naught term, which basically just tells you the beginning position of something. Um, so much like this tells you the beginning velocity, this would just tell you did it start off with kind of a head start or um, was it starting at zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the order of these uh, terms, so I'm going to switch this over to here and this over to there, and the reason why is because I can now map this onto a um, traditional quadratic polynomial, so a squared term, uh, and we can do that by showing you these colors right here. So we have the y value being equal to the total distance fallen, the coefficient for the x squared term, a, um, being equal to one half times our acceleration in this case, x is just our time, and b is our initial velocity, again x is the time, and c is our beginning position, and we can begin to map all the information that we know about how this equation behaves onto simple looking up of uh, how things fall, or graphing of how things fall. So to go a little bit further, if we assume down is positive, then what we get is distance fallen graph looks something like this, traditional parabola. Uh, it starts at zero because we're going to assume here that the initial position or initial displacement is zero. So this term is zero. If instead we still kept gravity as positive, but had an initial position of let's say five meters, then it would just shift the graph up like this. However, if we instead, let's say, started with an initial position of 50 meters, but then made gravity negative, then what it would do is it would shift the graph up to let's say here, and then it would flip it upside down because this value or the, um, in this case, uh, this value or coefficient would now be a negative and that would kind of flip the direction of the graph. So let's take a look at that and it would look something like this. So if you assume gravity is a negative value, then you get a downward facing parabola. If you assume gravity is a positive value, then you get an upward facing parabola. And the D naught term just determines how much it shifted up or down. And we won't talk too much about beginning speed and how that affects things because it's a little bit more complicated. But let's get into how would you graph this. So if we had the same thing we had before with the velocity problem, which is graph the distance fallen this time versus time for a rock that is thrown up at a speed of 30 meters per second. And let's assume up is positive and that gravity is equal to negative 10 meters per second squared. Then in order to graph this, what we're going to do is we're simply just going to plug in. So it doesn't say anything about a beginning position, so I'll assume it's zero. Uh, the beginning speed is 30, and it's up, so it's positive. In this case, we can pull that from down here. We know that gravity is 10, so the acceleration is 10, but we still have to keep that one half in front. And then our time at time zero is what we're going to start with. We plug in into these two values. And what we get is that the total distance traveled was zero. Well, if we plug in again, we can get that after one second, it's gone about 25 meters. Uh, again, just plugging in all of those values. After two seconds, it's gone 40 meters. After three seconds, it's gone 45 meters, or that's how high up it is. After four seconds, it's coming back down, so it's now at the 40 meter mark. After five seconds, it's at the 25 meter mark. And after six, it's back down at zero. So if we wanted to know the hang time of this object, uh, we would know that it's actually six seconds. That's how long it takes for it to go up and then come back down. We could also figure out how long it takes to reach its maximum height by doing this. And we just look for the apex or the kind of top of our curve here. And we can see that it happens at three seconds. Um, and we can see that just based on kind of symmetry that that will be in the middle right there. But there are other ways to do it, but that's the easiest for now. And then if we plotted a line through it, it would just simply look like that. So this is basically how you graph the relationship between distance and time for something in free fall. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and please do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.